Hey friends, I just got myself a stand for my phone which also can, I can put my camera on it as well so I may come around to making videos with my camera again if I can figure out a setup that's intuitive but anyway, uh, I promised a friend that I would make a video about figuring out your purpose and like um, figuring out what problems to work on and I had a bunch of stuff to say about it I've been procrastinating on it because there's so much to say but I don't like the idea of having it you know, kind of looming on my mind. So I'm just going to spend about seven to eight minutes and just riff on it and see what happens. So it's not going to be, you know, a comprehensive answer, but it's going to be what comes to mind. And I'm going to kind of just imagine that a younger version of myself or a friend of mine, a younger friend maybe, comes along and asks me this question. Hey, Visa, how do I figure out what problem I want to work on? You know, there's so many problems that I've been interested in over the years. Uh, I'm, I'm moderately decent at a bunch of stuff, but I don't know what to do. All right. So there's a bunch of different angles on this, which is part of why it's a hard question to answer because you need to know yourself as well as possible and you need to also, you don't need to, but it helps to have a sense of where opportunity is. Because, and so this is where I talk a bunch about being strategic. It's one of my, now I don't know how many videos I've made about being strategic, but the idea of being strategic is basically just to think, you know, it's, I don't mean to be condescending to people who are struggling with this because it is hard. It is hard to figure this stuff out, but I'll just lay out how I think about it. Um, so the first variable to make sense of is yourself. You know, it's what 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 your feelings are, what your your motivations are, and you don't need to know this in great detail. You just need to have a sense, right? Like, what are you good at? What are you bad at? Have a articulate your historical sense. So I recommend talking to your parents if you can, or your siblings, whoever you're close to, childhood friends. Talk also to you know your colleagues, people that you just ask as many different people as you can what do they you know how would they describe you to someone else you know how would they introduce you to someone else what would they say if they didn't know what you did for a living what would they assume you would do for a living you know you want, you want to kind of get a sense of how people make sense of you and people will say some people might say oh you know you're very meticulous very methodical some people might say oh you're very good with people you're very good with whatever and oh before you ask anybody about these things write down what write down what you yourself think the answer is you know so because how people perceive you and how you perceive yourself and how you are all of these are slightly different things and it could be that the way you perceive yourself and the way other people perceive you perceive you is different and that is you know it's not clear what exactly you should do about that but it's something to think about it might be that you misunderstand yourself or it might be that you the way you present yourself comes off a certain way in the context that you're in, depending on you know your culture, society, blah, blah, blah. But um, the clearer a sense you have of what you do and what you're like and what your priorities and interests are, the better position you will be to make decisions. And the other thing to do is look back on your life. So if you're really young, if you're like 20, you know, if you're a teenager, it can be hard to see. But even there, you can look for clues backwards. Uh, but you know, the, the older you get, the easier it is to look through your past for more clues. And what I'm talking about here is how do you, not how, um, how did you spend your time? You know, what do you do when you are not working? What do you do when you have a day off to do whatever you like? What do you do in that time? I've noticed that I go spelunking on it through like Wikipedia trails and uh, looking up the etymology of words, like the history of words, where, where do what words come from what? I read, I consume a lot of media. I'm like a media theorist, media analyst. I just love, you know, getting to understand culture by analyzing media. I like talking to people. Um, I hate, you know, I hate schedules. I hate calendars. I hate accounting. I hate anything to do with that kind of nitty gritty shit. I can't do that at all. And so I know that I should steer away from roles and industries and whatever where those are the things that I'm going to have to do. Right. Even though some amount of it is kind of inescapable in any context, but you want to know what your specialties are going to be. Uh, there's a quote from, I think, Peter Drucker who says, there's only three things in, in business or in, in making stuff. It's like, okay, you make the stuff, you sell the stuff, and then you keep the lights on right? in a, in a company. Right? So you have, ma you have uh, engineering or innovation, the people who build the product. And then you have marketing and sales, the people who sell the product. And then everybody else keeps the lights on. You know, they, they, and, and this is important work, you know, legal, HR, um, payroll, you know, just making sure that everything's intact so that the other two groups of people don't drive themselves crazy. And so, okay, making stuff, selling stuff, keeping stuff functioning, like between these three things, 
what do you feel is the best thing for you? Like, so again, for me, like I can't balance books, you know, I can't, I dislike it, despise it. It makes me uncomfortable. So I'm never gonna, uh, you know, run my own HR company or I'm never gonna do like a accounting software or something. I'm never gonna do any of that. And so my choices are, I'm gonna either make stuff or sell stuff. And I have, I, I do have a respect and admiration for people who make things. But when I witness people who really love it, right? People who are really into innovating and really into technical details and making like dozens of co dozens of versions of, of a product. Uh, I look at that, I'm like, eh, I don't have that kind of intense passion. Whereas for me, I love words, I love ideas. You know, I've made so many YouTube videos even without an audience. I've made so many tweets, I've made done so much writing. I, I can play with that stuff for free, for fun. You know, I, I, I would pay to do it sometimes if like, you know, if uh, I have a limited amount of time in the weekends and stuff back when I was working, I would set aside time for that to, and I, not even explicitly, but I would just do it because it nourished my soul in some way. And when you figure out that that's how you are, that's what, how you spend your spare time, that's how you do things, that's a very valuable insight to have about yourself. And that tells you what kind of role you would flourish in and you would do well in, right? So between making stuff, selling stuff, and handling the money, uh, I'm, I'm a marketing guy. I, I sell stuff. I tell stories, come up with ideas, frame things, and that, that's my gem. And I currently, what I do is I, I'm a consultant where I help other people solve their marketing problems, right? So it might be... So, you know, someone's running a yoga studio or someone's doing like astrology stuff someone's doing like couples counseling i have all these different clients from all these different walks of life and they are very good at the problem that they are solving and but they have not they don't have the like experience and immersion and know it all know it all know how to pitch themselves well and you, know, you can piece together what i know by that just reading a lot of books and doing a lot of analysis over 20 years right so it's not that i have i possess secret information that you cannot possess like it, it, the, all the material is free you can go and look it up yourself but expertise and knowledge comes from experience and it comes and it's worth paying a premium for someone else's experience if you trust them right if you share if you have you know kind of values that match and and you want to work with those people and you trust that they can help you out i have a friend who's like a physical therapist and he has been helping my friends with their back pain, shoulder pain. He's just really good at figuring out what people need. And you know, like you could figure it out yourself if you're willing to go and do all the research and reading, it'll probably take you like weeks or months. And he's been doing it for years. So he has a sense, you know, he looks at you, it's like, oh, okay, you're, you know, this part of the thing needs, you need to put a lacrosse ball and roll it and then you'll have, this thing will get fixed. I don't know how the hell he does it, but he does it. And um, yeah, so that's, something to think about. What else? I said I had more to say on, on top of figuring that stuff out. Opportunity. Um, I don't believe in being like a super grandiose opportunist on the greatest, grandest scheme of things. I remember when I was a teenager, when I was, no, I was like 22, I was like, okay, what's a meaningful life? And I, was, I, I thought about it for a long time and I'm like, uh, space travel, right? Expanding human consciousness. How do we get humanity to the next level by and and you know how do we make life more worthwhile how do we uh, uh enjoy ourselves and like neil tyson you know, i used to watch a bunch of his videos and he had this thing about the manned mission to the moon and how that expanded human consciousness in the, in the 70s 60s you know mission was like 69 65 60 67 around there and uh subsequently there's doctors without borders and there was environmental protection acts and just Humanity perceiving itself from space and seeing the earth as by itself, that expanded human consciousness. It expanded people's concept of what it means to be alive, what it means to be human, what it means to be on earth, to be earthlings, right? And similarly, you know, going to Mars will expand that and that will expand our consciousness and it will make us think more in terms of what does it mean to share the earth with other beings? And so I was very passionate about that. And I'm like, okay, how do I contribute to human spacefaring efforts? And I had nothing. I'm like, I'm, I'm some guy in Singapore with like some marketing background, no audience, um, some writing skills. But what am I going to do? I'm going to talk to my friends about space. Like that's not going to move the needle on getting space forward. So that was like, that was like it, it, was, it, it was kind of an escapist fantasy for me that someday I will help. And interestingly now, like almost 10 years later, I realized that 
that dream is it can still be real you know it, it's it's just it's not going to get realized in the immediate one year two year sort of thing but over a lifetime i may potentially contribute to getting more people to think about space right and there's a great video called the overview effect which you should check out i'll post it in the links maybe that you know um, every person who's been to space and gazed upon the planet has expand has had this spiritual almost spiritual experience of expanding their mind about what it means to be alive and how precious earth is and um yeah you know so again like so i'm paying attention to myself making this video and i'm like oh you know why am i even talking about space in a video where i'm trying to guide people towards figuring out what their passion is their purpose is what they what problems they want to solve what they want to do with their time and you know i just went off on a, on a rant right and i'm going to include it i'm going to leave it in and that this you know it, it's everything you do is an education on yourself you're figuring yourself out and who you are what your priorities are and you know i just did an unprompted un you know uh compensated pitch for space travel why because it matters to me right and so knowing what matters to you in this way if you make a list of all the things you may not necessarily work on those things immediately but you can keep them like on the horizon of your your psychological map and i have a map of the city of your life your map your, your ideas your perspectives you know you live in the now but there's territory further out downtown you know across the street whatever which is where you want to go, right, potentially. Or just, you just want to enjoy your life. So you want to enjoy being an inhabitant of your city, of your life. And to do that, uh, you have to explore, right? You want to... And you want to know things. So if you know that there are landmarks in the distance that you might not be able to get to tomorrow or next year even, but you can navigate by them and you just have them in the distance as, as navigational aids, right, that you can kind of you know rely on for reassurance like oh yeah those are my values this is what i care about and i might not be working on those things right now but just by keeping them in your attention keeping them in your mind they have a way of influencing your behavior right so i don't know if i've not i've not answered the question how do you figure out what you want to work on um i haven't spoken enough about opportunity maybe i'll make a separate video about opportunity i think i'll make a separate video about opportunity but broadly okay figuring out your purpose uh, I don't think purpose is something that is, you know, fixed. Uh, it's something that is like a secret password in a box locked up somewhere that you could go and open up and discover and like, oh, this is my purpose. No, purpose is something that is dynamic. You know, it's, some, it's, it's style, it's rhythm, it's the way you, you are. And, and initially you're stiff and you're like, I, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what... And, and you... you and, embody your purpose in your conversations with people right where where do you steer and you know you know like so my thing is expanding people's consciousness expanding my own consciousness getting people to just expand their minds right be more imaginative see the world from a new perspective and just you know be more open be more free be more fresh that's that's me that's my thing you know and i don't need to be overly fixated on my name is visa and my purpose is to expand human consciousness like eh. You know, <laughs> it, you, you say it, it can be good to write that shit down, like on your, in your journals, on your blog, you can put it on your website if you want. But I think it's also good to have like intermediate steps, you know. So part of my long-term game to expand human consciousness, right, involves, okay, I got to meet as many, as, as many enlightened people as I can, as many, you know, intelligent, kind, wise, friendly, ambitious nerds that I can find and build relationships with them and, you know, encourage them, support them, ask them how they're doing, share stuff with them, help them out. And if I can do all those things, so like my intermediate purpose in the short run is I'm gonna help more people. I'm gonna talk to more people. I'm gonna ask people what they need help with. And so part of that is doing consulting work because that's the skill set that I have. So I help these smart, friendly, ambitious nerds become wealthier by helping them sell more. And in our conversations, I will happen to talk about, you know, the golden age that we want and, you know, libraries and, and human consciousness. And like, it's just, it's all, it's all connected. You know, I don't think I've done a fantastic job of communicating it. I'll probably be able to make a snappier video the next time around. But thanks for hanging out. I hope that clarified something for some people. And if not, you know, still, still cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. Ask me further follow-up questions. Done.